Hello guys, in this video I have a demo project for you for booking rooms. It could be university faculty rooms or any rooms in any facility. So administrator of the system would be able to add rooms and add hourly rate to each room and capacity. Then a student or user of the system would be able to add credits to their account via Stripe. Then they would be able to search the room. So for example, they need the room from this time to this time with capacity 5. And then they would be able to book the room for free or using their credits. And then everyone would see the calendar of when the rooms are available. You can filter by room or filter by user as administrator. So in this video, we will create the whole system and that will be done in two parts. First part will be generating the core of that thing with quick admin panel to save our time. So it would generate the core of the system like admin panel login mechanism, user management rooms and events, and the calendar. And then in the second part of this video, we will download the code and step by step we will code more features like searching the room, like transactions, like recurring events every week, small validation and stuff like that. And in the past, I've been doing such videos in live coding mode, but this time to save you time to make the video a bit shorter, I have asked a colleague Marius to actually create that project step by step. And it's available on GitHub. And I will just go commit by commit, commenting the code, what has been done, why it is working this way or that way. So I will just comment the code which is already written. So for you, it will be shorter than me typing on the keyboard and live coding. And if you want to dig deeper into some part, you can go to GitHub and check it out. And the original idea for this project was from Quick Admin Panel user. So whenever someone registers for Quick Admin Panel, there is automatic email being fired with a question, may ask what kind of project you want to create. And that is automated email, but I reply to that personally if someone does reply. So one reply happened with this. Proper mini specification of what they want to create. Reservation system to the university, calendar, add rooms, create events and recurring events and search for facilities. So that was the idea to create the project. What was skipped was only the last part of report for all reservations, because I don't really know how that report should look. But as a compensation, like a new feature, we added booking, paid booking with adding the credits. So let's begin creating. So we start a new panel called faculty. I choose my own favorite theme, core UI. And user management is here by default. So we need to create two CRUD menu items, two tables, it's rooms and events. So create new CRUD menu item, rooms, and what fields we need. Actually, the system already suggests the fields from my previous testing because I've created a CRUD with the same name, rooms. But I will skip it for now just to demonstrate you how it works. So you create field by field. We have room name, which is required. We have room description, which is not required. And we will also have a capacity. Capacity is a number, so integer. Capacity. Also optional. We save that. At the bottom we save the CRUD. And it generates everything that is needed for the CRUD. So model, controller, view, everything is being generated. And meanwhile we can create another menu item, which is events. Events will belong to a room. Again, skip any suggestions. So room ID is belongs to relationship to a room. That underscore ID is automatically added. So I need to just choose the model, choose the field what to show in the list, and we save. So event belongs to a room. Then let's add event title, which is required. Then we have event start date and end date, or in fact start time and end time. So date time picker, start time, required. And end time is also required because it will be calculated whether that room is available or not. So end time required as well. Finally, let's add a description, text area description, which will be optional. And what is important, who booked the room. So another relationship belongs to relationship to a user. So required and model is users. So every room will be booked by someone, whether it's administrator or someone from the faculty. And a final thing what we need from Quick Admin Panel is a module called System Calendar. It is there in the list, so we install that, and it allows us to populate the calendar from any CRUDs that we specify. So we have calendar sources, and we need one calendar source. Source is CRUD called Events, 
date field will be start time, so when it happens, and then we don't need prefix or suffix, we just show event title on the calendar. We save that, and from here we can download the code and continue locally. So by this point, we will be able to add a room and add an event. Okay, so we have installed project locally, and if we log in as administrator, we can see the rooms and we can see the events. Both tables are empty and we will start working on them one by one. So let's add a temporary room, testing room with form filler Chrome extension. And then let's try to add an event. And you will see the first thing that we need to change. Start time is really inconvenient. So if you click to choose the time, known as actually booking the time with minutes and seconds. We need to change that to have intervals like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or something like that. So this was exactly what we did. We use daytime picker for that and we change the format from seconds to minutes and also there's one parameter called stepping 10 or stepping 15 or 30 or whatever you prefer. And then also this is from quick admin panel, default time format was changed to have no seconds. So if we check out that branch, okay, we refresh that form and now we have proper start time of 9.30 for example. Like this, everything else form filler, user admin, and we save the event, and we should see the event on the calendar. As you can see, at 9.30. Next step is to add a recurring event. So for example, if there is a lecture every Friday at 4 p.m. So in adding new event, we'll have another new field, recurring until, and there is a date. So for example, an event that appears every Saturday until like the 3rd of May. And pre-fill everything else. So every Saturday from 12, 20 to 13, 20 until May 3rd and we save and the system creates as many events as they happened every Saturday. So April 11th, 18th, 25th and then May 2nd until May 3rd. And this is the code for it. So in event create is just one new field, nothing really fancy, input with date. Then in the controller simple event create is filled in with two more new things. So we added event service with two methods. First checking is room taken. So checking the room for all the dates in the future week by week. And if it's taken we redirect back with error. It's kind of a validation but it's more complex validation that's why it is in the service. And it looks like this. So a few parameter and a loop do while and if at least one event is in the wrong time, then we return true, means room mistake. And then if we have recurring until, we create all the recurring events, also with service. So this is another loop while we're creating more events with private method create event. So this event service is a great way to separate some logic to make the controller smaller, but the logic that doesn't really fit into a model or into form request for validation. So there should be some separate class related to that object. And in our case, it's event service. Next step is search for the room and booking the room. So we have new menu item, search room, and we need to specify the time, start time, end time, and capacity of people that we need. And we search for the room and we have one room available and then we can book the room. So how does it work in the code? First, in the database in Eloquent, we have new relationship room events. We have new menu item, search for the room. Also, we have two new routes, so search for the room, getting that page, and then filling that form, post to book the room. Search for the room, it's pretty simple blade with form at the top, and then table of available rooms at the bottom, with booking room as a dialog. It's a bootstrap code which contains another form to actually book the room with hidden parameters. And this is how it is triggered. So whenever you click book the room, there is a model with some parameters filled in. And in controller bookings controller, search room has the list of available rooms and that is empty unless the request is filled with those parameters, then we're actually searching for the room. And this is a pretty complex eloquent structure. So a room with capacity where it doesn't have events with these conditions. And then we have the available rooms. And finally booking the room, some validation, and then a similar thing like we had in the event creation. So we can fill in that form, 
with some dummy data, save changes, and we have our event booked on the calendar. Next step is to have calendar filters. I've checked out the next commit on the branch, so we can select by room or select by user. In our case, we have only admin, so we filter it out. And just to show you that it's actually working, let's add another room which will be empty and which won't have any reservations, any events. And we go to calendar and we choose that room. We filter it out and it should be empty. Yep, no events on the calendar for that room. In the code, we have on the calendar blade, we, had, we have a form on the top. And this is interesting, without any action, without any parameters, which means that it's submitting to the same URL with get parameters, which is room ID and user ID. And we fill it in with all the rooms and the users and the system calendar controller, which is originally generated by quick admin panel. We add two new parameters, so rooms and users for the dropdowns. And then we use eloquent function when, so when there is request input for room or when there's request input for user ID, we filter the events by room ID or user ID. But then there was one commit I will just show you just for seeding for testing 50 rooms. So there is database seeder class, which fires rooms table seeder. By default, it has user seeder for quick admin panel for user management, but we added one more for rooms table seeder. It just created 50 fake rooms but we don't need to use it currently. We have already a few rooms for testing. And now we get into the second part of the demo, which is paid bookings. So let's add a user, non-admin, who would be able to book the rooms. At the moment, they still can't do that, but without any payments. And now let's create a user, again, form filler, but let's simplify that to user gmail.com and password, and the role is user. Let's log in with that user. And behind the scenes, I've checked out the commit for my credits. So the next step is for users to add their credits, meaning purchase some amount of uh, money, credits, which they will use for booking the rooms. And behind the scenes, I've run composer install, added Stripe key and secret, and run migrations. So now, as we logged in as that user, we see my credits, which is empty. And you can add more credits, like $10, 50 or 100 and let's try it out. Testing data by Stripe. We add, and we have transactions completed, and your credit is $10. And in the database, we have Stripe ID for our customer and credits as 1,000, which means in cents, we have 1,000 cents and $10. Let's take a look at the code. So we need two parameters in .env for Stripe. Also, we will use Laravel Cashier. Then we will add a new model called Transaction. And I've added the credits and this became a transaction with room ID null. But any booking will also be transaction. Later, I will show you with room ID something. So any money related transaction like adding credits or using the credits for the booking will be in this table. Then in user, we add cashier related stuff and transactions. And all the logic related to Stripe is in balance controller. And we use Stripe related functions on user to charge. It's a one time charge, and then we create a transaction. Really important to use try catch here because anything can happen with charging, so you have to be really careful. Then, in this case, we chose to ignore default cashier migrations, add them as database migrations. And then, one more thing I didn't really agree with how Marius did it he changed the initial users table migration instead of creating new one specifically for new credits field. So I had a choice either reseed everything from scratch like migrate fresh seed or add that field manually which I did actually in the database. Now a few seeders for user just for testing. In JavaScript we have stripe key. In the menu of blade we have new menu item my credits. Also we add meta stripe key and this is the main blade for actually adding the credits and charging. So form with Stripe elements provided by Stripe and some JavaScript. So what should happen when I click add credits? And finally two routes, my credits and add balance. Next change is again for our administrator, this column hourly rate for a room. So we can edit a room to add hourly rate of for example $5 an hour. And then someone will be able to book that. If the room has zero hourly rate, which is null, then it's free. 
but if it does have hourly rate, then it would charge them against their credits. So to add that field, it seems like a lot of files, but it's really small changes everywhere. So new migration column to the database table, new fillable, then in controller, it was just a small fix. So request validation for hourly rate, then adding that to the translations, because we do generate translations in Quick Admin Panel, and then all the CRUD forms. So in index, we add the column, then in create, we add the field and stuff like that. And finally, we log in as a simple user again, and we search for the room and this column appears. So hourly rate in search results, the table will show how much it actually costs. So in the code, search blade contains that information. And then whenever we want to actually book, there is another new event service method, charge hourly rate. And if it fails, then we redirect that we don't have enough credits. And in the event service, we have charge hourly rate, which is not actually charging, it's actually removing the credits from your already existing credit line. It's just the database operation, not the Stripe operation. It actually happens in charge credits in the user table and adding the transaction. So let's try it out. Let's book that room for $5. For my event, we submit, and this is what we get. So we have our new event, and in the code, there's more logic in the next commit, in the final commit, which is booking time for transaction. Charge credits also contains the hours booking time. And then we have a separate transactions controller for the admin, and some more calculations here for the transactions. I won't dig too deep into that. I will just show you how it looks on the admin side. So whenever we log in as admin, we see transactions. So there were two transactions in our case, the adding credits for the amount of $10 and then using that for that room for one hour. And that's it. You can check out the code on GitHub. And as you saw for the projects like this one, Quick Admin Panel is a great way to start that. So we pre-generated like 50-60% of the project, like user management and all the schema of the database, but then on top we coded some more stuff. So this is probably the most typical use of our Quick Admin Panel, so I hope it was helpful both as a lesson how to code some stuff and also showcase of our tool. If you have any more ideas what demo projects similar to this one we can create, shoot in the comments below or email me directly and see you guys in another video.